And here it is, the new EFI unit from Genmax. This new unit has electric start. It also has remote start and has 4,500 starting watts and 3,600 running watts. Now you don't have the carburetor problems like you would with other conventional generators. And most people don't have problems as long as they take basic care steps like utilizing any kind of an additive always is helpful and also running them once in a while or doing proper storage maintenance. Now, one thing that's nice about also ES EFI is that when you go up in the elevation, you also don't have to do any of the jetting changes. So that's also really cool. Another thing too, with this thing being remote start, if you happen to be inside, say an RV, you can just hit the button and go, but make sure you do have your loads off when you do that. That'll help maintain and also um, prolong the life of your generator when you do that. You don't wanna have loads on it um, when you start it. So make sure all those are off. Another thing too, is uh, your runtime is also going to be better with fuel injection. So I don't know what that is yet. We'll have to test that later and just kind of compare. These fuel tanks should be exactly the same, and the engines are the same. They're both 145 cc engines. So, um, and I'll show you a couple cool things that I found out with this unit, which this is the show unit that I picked up uh, in Vegas. So actually, they sent it over after I left, and so I, I didn't get really much of the stuff that you would normally get in there, like all the toolkits and the manual and and anything else. I get the remote start and stuff but the new EFI unit uh, should be available for mass production they're going to be starting that pretty quick from what I heard so um, this is actually the show unit and they're not even available for sale yet but will be soon I should get a date for you guys and hopefully a coupon code so don't pay full price for any of these always come back and check the channel that way you can always get a little bit of a discount on all these units and then as far as price goes I think they were saying somewhere around the $1,000 mark. It might be just under, and it might be a little bit over. They don't know exactly yet where they were going to put it onto the market because a compact unit like this has a lot more features than, say, the other unit that's out there that is fuel-injected. I do have a video you guys can check out, too, if you want to see everything that they have that's coming out, including a couple tri-fuel units and units that can parallel and also series together to double your voltage, which is pretty cool. Nobody else has done that. So another cool thing about this unit is that this one here has access panels that you can get to on both sides. Notice now you do not have a fuel selector switch. This one, when you turn it on, which I'll show you in a little bit, the fuel pump will come on and prime, and then basically it's just a hit the button and it starts. So it's really cool. Okay, one of the reasons these little compact units are starting to become my favorite model is because one, they obviously have a lot of power. Two, they're easy to work on. Check this out. When have you ever been able to open both sides of a generator and get right to the starter really easy? That's like, you can't really do that with a lot of other units. So if you ever had to replace it or if you ever had to do maintenance on it, this is actually really nice. And I'm really glad that they did this, making it to where you can get to both sides of the engine by just moving one screw, popping the panel off and go. Okay, so dual fuel unit, carburetor down there. Here is the propane line that runs kind of directly into the carburetor. 145 cc engine and now it's a, it's a little bit hard to see but you can see right here no more bowl so the float bowl and everything has been removed and what you have now is kind of a direct shot here going in you still have a choke up here that moves back and forth and then back there let's see if i can show you here you go there is your actual fuel injector so it's not really a throttle body because it is kind of going in after the carburetor or at least right at the end of the body of the carburetor so not really a throttle body injection but you know not exactly you know direct injection or anything because it is going in well at the intake manifold i guess this is kind of like how they run some of the fuel injected dirt bikes now they have a fuel injector that's kind of just kind of running right in there so pretty cool uh, this is the remote wire right here and you do have a lithium battery down there and 145 cc engine again so i'm going to go ahead and add some oil to this and then uh, we'll go ahead and just kind of compare the two on a sound check and we'll do a load check as well just to kind of see how well it does and see what it sounds like and if you guys are looking for the you know magnetic dipsticks um, i do have some of these so if you're looking for some i'll leave a link in the description because this will fit 
several of the Gen Max models. It fits the EFI unit. It does fit the dual fuel unit over there as well, along with the bigger 7250 as well as the uh, 6000. So, and a quick look at the display. You have your main on off switch, low idle, push to reset. And then of course our multi-function digital display center, which this will obviously show us all of the information we need, fuel level and more on off switch or quick start you know for the electric start this is a uh, 20 amp plug that they do have here with a gfi and then this is your 30 amp twist lock that we have your 30 amp and then this generator is also let's see this one says it's bonded to the frame there but neutral bonded to the frame so this is a bonded generator just so you know and up there neutral bonded to frame all right let's get it outside Okay, we're gonna go ahead and add some gas now. And even though this is fuel injected, I still recommend adding some kind of an additive. It can be a fuel injector, conditioner, cleaner like this, or you can still use like a stable or something just in case if you don't run these often, that way you don't have to worry about it so much. And being that it is a more traditional fuel injection system, this will actually still clean the injector and it will clean the valves. Unlike some of today's vehicles that are direct injection, the fuel injection cleaners actually don't even hit the valves because it's going straight into the cylinder. So this will still work as a fuel uh, injection cleaner and uh, um, also help um, prolong the life of your fuel when you are putting it in here. So it'll help storage last a little bit longer when utilizing like 87 octane and stuff. And that's all these need if you're gonna run them all the time. If you want to run 91 octane, you're not going to get any more performance out of it, but it will have a longer storage life. So that's something else you could consider. Okay, so now we're going to turn on the generator on uh, the main switch and we should hear the fuel pump kick on, pressurize and just make a little bit of noise. Which and kind of hear it priming. And there it goes. All right, so hopefully the battery's not too low on this because uh, this has been traveling around, they said a lot. So, well, I guess we'll see if it works. Oh, wow, well, look at that. Uh, that's on off. I thought there was a little bit of runtime on this. He said there was a little bit, but at least from what I remember talking to him, but it was like minimal. So not even an hour maybe on this unit yet. But uh, there we go. It started super quick. Cool. Now I would say this is probably as quiet as the uh, you know dual fuel unit. Seems to be the same. And considering it is the same engine, and also, uh, you know, probably utilizing the same muffler and everything, I haven't gone all the way through it yet, but let's do a sound check, we'll do a quarter load test and kind of see where it lands. Okay, the first test is at 23 feet away and on low idle. Okay, I've tested a lot of generators right in this same exact spot at 23 feet, so we'll see where this comes in, and this is on concrete. And this is pretty much where the 3500 dual fuel comes in, right about 60.5, 61 decibels. So we'll go ahead and put a load on it. Okay, we're gonna use this hair dryer and we'll do two tests. One at about 750 watts right here, and then the other one at 1200 watts. And if it was a true quarter load test, it'd be about 900, but this will still give us some useful info. We're gonna start it on the 750 watt first. So there we go, about 700 plus watts, give or take. And so now as we look at it, we probably added about 0.75 decibels, give or take. So we'll go bump it up to 1200 watts.
and whenever you add grass or rocks or something other than concrete it can definitely change the amount of sound coming out so when other people are doing reviews as well you have to take that into consideration okay so we're going to do a 50 percent sound check and so i'm going to turn this up this should pull a little bit more than 1700 watts and we'll go look at the front of the generator so about 1.7 and so that should be just over 1700 watts and just off to the side at again about 23 feet this is definitely sounding great and again grass or rocks or something other than just a pure concrete pad is going to make it sound a lot quieter now i don't know about you guys but i am definitely glad that there's more companies coming out with fuel injection this really gets us away from the carburetor problems that a lot of people have had you know earlier in the years because they just honestly some people just don't take care of their stuff and they let it sit so you need to make sure you do run those fuel conditioners and more even with these electronic fuel injection it's not a bad idea to make sure that you're not getting corrosion or any kind of you know plugging up of the fuel injector and also that will prolong the life of the fuel that's in there and another benefit again is that when you do go up in the altitude you don't have the jetting problems now you will lose power because obviously the air is thinner so fuel injection doesn't get rid of everything um, because when the air is thinner and you don't have like force induction like a turbo or a you know obviously a supercharger you're still going to lose power but um other than that this is a pretty darn cool unit so i'm glad that somebody else is doing it let me know what you guys think about this unit in the comments down below and i hope to see you guys next time